When it comes to collecting CDs, I am at the point of my acquisition phase where I'm starting to get a little burned out, a little fatigued. I got so many open orders, I don't know what's coming in. I've had CDs that are scratched and skipped so much that I had to return them. And I am grateful for that because I was just getting carried away spending so much money on CDs when I could really just be going to Goodwill once a week and hoping for the best and spending, you know, five or six bucks if I found something interesting for a small pile rather than going on eBay, Amazon, and just just getting everything I want, just building Insta collection, which takes all the fun out of it. Having said that, I do have a little bit of a stack here and I do have more stuff coming in, but I have been listening to music every day, starting with Talking Heads popular favorites disc two. You may have you may remember on a previous video I bought this thinking that I was getting disc one and two, but it was only disc one. I back in the day I didn't own any Talking Heads albums. I I do believe I had fear of music on vinyl, but I almost never listened to it. I had this thing though, the double C D. So when I bought it on a previous haul, I thought I was getting both of these, so I had to separately order this one and I was listening to it today and it got to the very end uh, track 14 is lifetime piling up which I didn't remember that song being such a banger but I was really enjoying it when the CD started skipping so I was like oh great I got to return another one and I'll I'll get to that in a minute but I popped the disc out of the player cleaned it up put it back in and it played through the last two tracks fine P.S. If you can hear my cat wailing in the background, she's a moron. Uh, so this is good. Now I have both Talking Heads popular favorite CDs. Next is a CD from a small Pennsylvania band who are still active, still out there playing shows. They're called Digger. This album is called Power Bait. This is one of my favorite albums from back in the day. I used to have it on vinyl, but I gave it away when I gave all my stuff away. I have a lot of fond memories of this band. First of all, I when I was in a band, the first time uh, we ever played, I think we opened for them at one point. I can't remember because it was at this one venue where we played our first show ever, and it was also a place where we saw Digger. I think I might be mixing memories and glamorizing like oh, our first show ever was opening for digger I, m maybe that's not what it was now that i think about it but the singer of this band chris benner one time i saw them maybe it was the first time i saw them live i don't know i was a very introverted kid when i was a teenager but when i saw this band i really really loved them and once i saw them play a show i went up to chris benner and i was like hey um can can I take a picture with you? And he was like, yeah, man, like, why don't you grab one of my guitars? Like, get up on the stage, sit here with me. And like, he, he was so cool. He handed me one of his guitars. We were like posing with the guitars. I still have the picture somewhere. Um, and, you know, back then he was a rock star to me. I was probably like 15 years old and he was probably in his early 20s, you know, and he probably had a day job or was in college or something and just drove into New Jersey to play a show with his band. But uh, I will never forget that, you know, that he was so cool, you know. So this uh, this album is really good and I, I believe it holds up. I think I listened to it just a couple of years ago and... It kind of sucks because I didn't look closely enough at the eBay listing. And this is one of the things of just getting carried away buying too much stuff is that the back tray is really water damaged. You can actually see kind of the ripples in there. The CD appears to be fine. I haven't spun this one yet to test it, but it's a shame because it's not going to look good on the shelf. The spine is really wavy you could just see that there so too bad but i i went back and looked at the listing and it was very clearly marked like there's some water damage on the back tray and please look at the pictures carefully which i did not do so that's my fault not the sellers next i have a album called central reservation by an artist known as beth orton she 
I discovered her on the Chemical Brothers album, Dig Your Own Hole, where she lent her vocals to a track called Where Do I Begin, I believe. And I loved her voice in that. And I owned all her albums back in the day. I even had a giant pic, uh, poster, a uh, promotional poster from this in my apartment at one point. I liked this chick a lot. I even saw her live in 2006, the first time I ever visited Austin, Texas, which I ended up living in Austin for a long time with my wife later on in life. So a lot of fond memories of this artist as well. Having said all that, I when I listened back to this the other day, I'm like, I don't really like it that much. Like, I didn't really like her voice all that much. It just, I didn't like it as much as I remember. And my wife said, well, maybe you're not in the mood for it. So maybe that's true. But I, let's just say I'm not going to collect Beth Wharton's entire discography. But if you like, like, folky indie with some beats on it, you might enjoy, you might enjoy this album. Next, this is one that holds a lot of nostalgia for me. This is Future Sex Love Sounds by Justin Timberlake. This was pretty much in constant rotation around the time I met my wife. So this was like the jams of the summer, uh, Sexy Back and My Love. And my favorite is Love Stoned. I've been listening to that track on repeat lately. I want to maybe do a cover of it with my guitar it's such a good song i didn't really love this album back in the day but my wife who i was chasing around really liked it a lot so i didn't mind it i'll tell you that much but now uh listening to listening back to it it fills me with that nostalgia but also it's a freaking masterpiece of an album some of the songs later in the album could probably be cut but this is this is a certified classic, and I really love it. Next, this one is an odd story. This is Madonna, Like a Prayer. When I saw the disc, I saw there's like a gash, and I don't know if you can see like right there, right there. That's like in the disc, and it's it's on both sides. So I didn't even put this in my player. I just said, hey, I want to return this. It's damaged. And they said, you can keep it. Here's a refund. This is one of these big companies, right? So I said, okay, well, I guess I got a donor case. But then I thought, let me throw it in the CD player and see what happens. And sure enough, it played flawlessly from start to finish. I don't know how, but it's fine. So I don't have to repurchase this again. And I, in a inadvertently dishonest way, got it for free. So I didn't lie. I didn't mean to lie, but I didn't do my due diligence and I feel a little bit bad about it, but it's, it's again, it's some massive company and it, they sent me like $2 and 50 cents back for this CD. So like a prayer, I consider Madonna's last great album from her original run i would like to collect from the debut through to this album i already have like a virgin which you may have seen in a previous uh haul now i have like a prayer so i need the self-titled i need true blue also i made an error in a previous video where i said the song cherish was on true blue i think i was thinking of open your heart cherish is actually on this album so there's like a prayer. Next we have Come On, Feel the Lemonheads. I showed It's a Shame About Ray in a previous video. Now I have Come On, Feel the Lemonheads. This was actually the first album I owned from them. And I need to replace the tray in here. The teeth are all gone. But I prefer It's a Shame About Ray, which is odd for me because I have this tendency where if I like a band, the first album I've ever heard of them tends to be my favorite for whatever reason. Maybe that good first impression just sticks with me. And while I really enjoyed this album when I first got it, I did like It's a Shame About Ray even better. I think it's a more solid album. Just hits me in the feels a little bit more than this album. And Lemonhead, another band, I used to have their whole discography. I had that old punk crap that they made before they turned into this like uh, heartland indie rock <laughs> type of music. 
And I really only need the two albums that I have from them at this point. Next, REM Monster, uh, another band. I'm only going to get two albums from them. The other one is Green. I already showed it. So now I have all the REM that I need. I don't like REM as much as I used to, but Green is still a banger and Monster is still a banger. Now the front tray or the front cover uh, part of this CD case is cracked to hell, but at least I got the orange tray and the teeth are all still intact. So I'm very happy about that. Everything, everything here in general is in good condition. I just need to replace that front. And also the, I just realized this, this spine, which is not the one that shows on the shelf is sun bleached to hell. Wow. That is, that is paler than a ghost, but the other side, which is the side that shows is fine. So this must've been in a shop, like facing a window or something at some point. Next, we have a band that might be known as a one hit wonder for their song Closing Time. Closing Time is on an album called Feeling Strangely Fine, which is a great album and I do want to own it on CD. I will get it eventually, but whatever sale I was shopping for this one, a buy two, get one, I believe it was, they only had The Great Divide, which is an earlier album from Semisonic. And guess what? It's excellent. It's a shame that they were seen as a one hit wonder for closing time when in general, their whole body of work is above average at the least, but this album is really good. It has a song called Down in Flames, which is a really tragic rocker about losing a friend. And I did, I learned how to play this on guitar and it was very emotional when I tried to sing a cover at uh, on TikTok, for, you know, back a couple of years ago. But yeah, this album is awesome. This might even be better than the one that has closing time on it. Next, I grab a couple, actually three off of Amazon. Now, Amazon is really weird with CDs and it's hard to tell what you're going to get because every album you look up has 50 different listings of the vinyl and different editions of CD and the streaming. And you, you, you click on one thing, you think you're going to a CD or a physical release and it takes you to Amazon Music. It's a real pain in the neck, but there are some diamonds in the rough. They sell these Metallica remasters uh, I, on some kind of algorithmic pricing scheme because if you keep an eye on them, you can get them for five bucks. So when I saw that Kill 'Em All and Master of Puppets remastered were five bucks, and I've seen Injustice for All for five bucks, but I didn't pull the trigger. Now, as of this recording, it's like eleven ninety eight or something, but I have it in my car waiting for it to hit five bucks again so I can scoop it up. I am not a metalhead by any means, but I love the old Metallica albums. Again, just like Madonna, just like Van Halen, just like Pink Floyd, these legendary album runs, uh, starting with Kill 'Em All, going through, I actually don't know the chronology of these early Metallica albums. I just know Kill 'Em All. I'm, I think Kill 'Em All was the first, was their debut album. Um, but man, they put out so many incredible albums back in the day. Random Access Memories. This was on Amazon for seven and change. So I was like, all right, I got to get this. Then I didn't drop it. I didn't drop it. Um, I'm tr I will try to collect Daft Punk's entire discography. <laughs> they are a band that just have all, they, all their albums are great. All of them, including Human After All, which I've talked about before. So I have homework discovery, human after all. Now I have random access memories. Now I just have to get the alive albums and daft club and I'll probably get the Tron soundtrack. I think it's worth having. Let's sneak a random video game in here. This is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this in, in Chinese, but Zhuan Yuan sword. Uh, this is a Chinese RPG that I pre-ordered. Uh, the switch being at the end of its life cycle, you can watch a, a couple videos back. I made a couple huge video game hauls. I just went on an absolute spending spree of video games. And this is a game that I pre-ordered at that time. 
So I considered canceling the pre-order when the flames of video game FOMO started to run out, but I figured oh, I'll let it ride and I'll, I'll let it show up. Here's another mistake I made. I, this is completely on me. I got one of my favorite albums from one of my favorite bands, Fugazi. Now, I used to have a friend group that worshipped this band. And I would never say I worshipped them, but I was definitely in awe of them for a long time. And though I haven't been a heavy listener of them in a very long time, this is one of those albums that I got when I was in like junior high and it really left an impression on me. And I still think it's my favorite, if not their best album. So I knew I had to have it. And I went and put a bunch of them in my watch list. And when I got an offer back from one, I bought it. And I didn't look closely enough where the auction said, this one doesn't even have a back cover. Oh, man. So I don't know what I'm going to do because I can't... Uh, my... Um, tendencies won't allow me to put this on the <laughs> CD tower without a spine. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might, I don't know, give this away and just buy another copy. But again, these are the annoying things that happen when you just get carried away. You get careless and you're just throwing money away. So I'm trying to be more careful there. Next, here's a band that I'm not really into, but I love this particular album this is ecstasy xtc oranges and lemons i listened to this album during a podcast segment that i made for the press playcast which you can listen to at pressplaycast.com or just search it up on uh, any podcast catcher except for spotify it's not on spotify we did we do sometimes albums of the years segments so we'll pick a random year during our lifetime and take a deep dive into the albums that came out that year and pick a top five or a top 10 or something like that. So when we did, I believe this is 1989. Yeah. When we did 1989, I saw that this band that I've been wanting to check out, put out this album and I listened to it and I really liked it. it I believe it made my list even, or maybe it made my honorable mentions list. Unfortunately, when I went deeper into this band's discography, I didn't really like any of their other stuff. Even Skylarking, which is supposed to be one of their most beloved albums. I just didn't like it. But I knew I had to get Oranges and Lemons into my collection. It's really great, really quirky, poppy. Uh, it's just excellent stuff. I love the, the first, like four tracks like it starts really strong but it even the deeper cuts are are good and i do recommend it as a starting point if you want to check out xtc and last but not least as i've been talking about in previous videos i'm trying to collect music video collections on dvd because i don't know they make me extremely nostalgic and they're more fun to watch on a CRT TV with a old school stereo surround sound system than they are on your phone on YouTube. And who knows how long YouTube will last, who, long, who knows how long Vivo will last and all these crappy pl platforms with uh, the music videos on them. So I found some message board threads where people were asking, hey, what are the best music video collections on DVD? And this one came up recommended i love peter gabriel and peter gabriel has especially interesting music videos from back in the day so i thought this is a no-brainer to pick this up it has everything you you know it has sledgehammer of course one of the most famous music videos of all time uh games without frontiers i know that song quite well i didn't know there uh, if i knew there was a video i haven't seen it in a while even red rain again the opening track on so which has sledgehammer on it one of my favorite albums i didn't realize all these songs had videos i remember kiss the kiss that frog i remember shock the monkey i remember steam i do vaguely remember some of these videos but i can't wait to re-watch it because 
as with maybe most people, the only one that really sticks in my mind is Sledgehammer because that video used to be on MTV all the time, which is not a bad thing. It's an absolute banger song and one of the coolest music videos of all time. And I'm really looking forward to watching it again. And I can't wait to watch. I do have some other music video collections and I'm going to spend the long weekend that's coming up here, definitely just chilling out and watching the Sonic Youth music video collection that I got, the Smashing Pumpkins music video collection that I got, this Peter Gabriel collection. And I did order the Madonna Celebration video collection. And I can't wait to see that because that is gonna be a nostalgia overload for me because I remember when MTV was a new thing. I remember when her videos were in constant rotation, even more than Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer, you would see Express Yourself 50 times a day if you had MTV on. And that is a, that's when music videos, I sound like a boomer. That's when they, you know, they don't make them like this anymore, but those are really cool music videos and I can't wait to watch more of them. What is your favorite music video of all time? Drop me a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. <laughs>